Hi, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. We're back at the workbench. Got another project on our Emacs. Our goal today is to remove this front panel. We're going to be replacing the volume and data sliders, and we're also going to be replacing this tired old LCD display module. So for starters, I always like to point out that I am working on a grounded workbench. I'm wearing neoprene gloves and I have a ground strap on my ankle. These are precautions that you want to take when you're working on vintage electronic music instruments because these things are very susceptible to damage from electrostatic discharge. So, with that said, let's dive in. We've already taken the bottom of this machine off. We previously, in our last video, installed the aftermarket power supply upgrade that we offer. There are some things that you must do before you get to this stage, I would suggest checking out that video for that whole process. So we have another IDC header here. This goes from the main board to our front display. This is the bottom of the Emacs, and this is the front of the machine right here. So we're going to use the scribe, and we're just going to very carefully Work this IDC header socket off. This is only 30 some odd pins, so mostly you just want to work from the edges. There we go. The goal of that is to put zero force on this ribbon. You do not want to be pulling on this. Okay. On the bottom side, when we take the bottom off of this, we remove some of these Phillips screws. On the top side, there are four screws. I've already removed those previously. So the only thing that's holding this display in place now are two remaining screws, Phillips screws on the side. I'm going to remove those now. We also need to remove the power switch, which is mounted to the front display. Just a couple of plastic nuts that hold it in place. There's a nut on the rear that sets the depth, and then a plastic nut on the front. That screws right off, and then the switch will pull right out. There's also a tension washer. Make sure you don't lose that. That goes on the back side of the switch. And then there are some just Phillips screws here that hold this front panel in place. So we'll take those out. First thing that we're going to do is remove this stock LCD. So follow me over here to the bench and we will get working on removing the solder that's holding this display in place. We're also going to remove these sliders, these slide potential meters, because they are old and gunky and not moving very smooth and that is no good. we
like to, when I do this display upgrade, I really like to leave the stock header in place on these rack units. Reason being is that these PCBs are really fragile. These vintage EMU PCB traces are really easy to damage. So if you're going about this upgrade and you're going from the backside to remove the solder and your plan is to remove the stock header, it's much easier to mess things up. Going at it this angle, the worst thing that can happen is you might damage this header. You know, if we damage this display, we don't really care. It's basically kind of like sacrificial, so. So I'm just wiggling this around while I'm getting the last little bit of solder off of the last couple legs that are holding. And we've almost got it, there we go. Nice and clean. So this will make it really easy for us to remount the OLED display in place of this stock LCD. So the next thing that we're gonna do is work on removing the solder that's holding these sliders in place. But because these sliders are totally sacrificial at this point, I just take my flush cut dikes and I just cut them off. through a lot of these um, solder sucking tools I used to spend a lot of money and uh, you know like $400 for uh, one of these tools and I learned through trial and error and through basically having technicians that work for me ruin tools um, I learned pretty quickly that uh, buying uh, the cheaper Chinese offerings off of Uncle Jeff's website um, is just fine. These things work every bit as good as the their counterparts that are, you know, name brand and cost ten times the amount of money. Really, what it comes down to is how frequently you change out the consumable parts, the filters, and how often you clear the passage of solder and debris. Very nice. So now we'll hit this with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And 
and I see that we inadvertently exposed a trace right there, so I'm just going to use my enamel pen to cover that over. All right, we're looking good. I think I'm gonna clean this one, last one up a little bit more. Looking a little, still a little bit clogged. There we go. Okay, so we have our uh, new sliders. These just come in a kit. They are a perfect fit. A little bit of flux to help the new solder foil. And I just like to bend the legs over will keep it in place while I solder it. That way I don't have to hold it. sliders in place. Now let's uh, move on to the OLED and we'll put a little flux, little starter flux on here. Put a link to this in the video description, this um, Kester. I love this stuff. It's in a handy dandy pen. It doesn't get all over the place. It's a no clean solder flux. Love this stuff. It's really great. But like I said, I'll put a link in it in the video description if you want to get some. Okay. So you remember I said uh, that the display, the stock display, didn't have mounting hardware. And I noticed that this PCB is different than some, it only has two. Uh, screws. So I'm actually, I think I'm just going to forego putting in a bolt and nut on the front hole and I'll just put one on the rear. So here's the difference between the OLED and the LCD. What do I do with that LCD? So the LCD has got 14 pins where it connects to the header just like on the OLED. But the difference on the LCD is that it has these two pins on the end that used to connect right here. And those would be the place where the power would come in for the electroluminescent backlight. Since we're installing an OLED and it's self-eliminating, i.e. each pixel is a, is a small LED, um, there's no need for a backlight. So the inverter that applies, that provided power to these leads will also get removed. And so that's why I'm gonna put in some hardware to help hold this in place. So I just got a small machine screw, a nut, a lock washer, and a nylon spacer. The first thing I'm going to do is just fit this on here, making sure that pin one lines up and all that. And then I will bolt down through here with the lock washer on and put the nut on. Oh wow, that's a teeny, a teeny, tiny little guy. 
It's hard to do this with neoprene gloves on, but I somehow managed it. Okay. We'll just solder on our header. So another difference is that on these old displays, there's only 14 pins. Um, this is an 8-bit parallel display. And modern displays have a backlight power, usually on pin 15 and 16. Because there's no backlight in an OLED, pins 15 and 16 are MC. But we just want to make sure that when we install this, we line up pin 1 of the OLED module to pin one of the header. Okay, so now that we've got our new sliders and our OLED installed, we want to put it back into the front panel. Important thing to remember before you do that is to pull this little film off of the display. Uh, this is on there to prevent the surface of the display from getting marred or bunged up when you're soldering. So leave it on until after you finish soldering and then take it off. Now we'll reconnect our IDC socket to the header. Last step is to plug in the power to our Emacs and we'll do a quick test to make sure that our display is turning on and it looks good. we got some more work to do on this particular Emacs. We're going to remove this floppy drive and we're going to upgrade it to SCSI and we're going to install our wireless SCSI emulator. So this is the expected message that we should see on this machine. It doesn't have a, a disk in the drive, so it doesn't have any software to load, so it's expecting a disk. But this display looks great, so we'll continue on.